Oh, to motivate one person to make other people unhappy? Yeah. I know as a salesperson, I never do a sale by myself, ever. And if I do try, it's a better chance of failure. I can like go through so many statistics about sales versus individual and team sales and team sales for now. But yet, we're told it's to motivate them. Well, we demotivate everybody else and that's a good idea. Why should we grow big? Why is big better? What's wrong with having a 50 person profitable company that innovates, makes new products year after year and has extremely happy customers? It's bad. It's not enough. Why should we grow big? Oh, because the VCs want us to so we can make deal. Go public. Yeah. I don't know. Why? Ask yourself these questions. I'm really serious about it. Why should we have sneakers at work? Why is there control? Why should one person know something, like the manager or the boss, but another person not? What is so secret anymore in this world of transparency, of this world of the internet, of Twitter, of Facebook? What is so secret? Secrecy harms a workplace, which creates a lack of transparency, it creates distrust, and it makes fear. De-educates. Why should we have it? What is so secret? Alright, ask yourself, I mean, maybe you guys have questions, but I want you to do that. I want you to finish this, this is my last slide, thinking three times like a child. Why? Is whatever this person is saying a good idea? Why does it work today? Why does it work for me and my company? And why should it? Why, why, why? And with that, I will finish and ask you guys some questions. I believe we have five minutes or so for you to ask why, if you guys have any questions. Maybe why what I'm saying is right. Or why if sales, individual commissions don't motivate. I don't know. Questions? Back, yay. I don't know why, it's a good point. <laughs> we can talk about that later if you want. <laughs> Maybe because we're thinking in an old way. <laughs> Other questions about it? That was an easy one, I like that one. It only took one line. Come on, nobody else? Ah, here we go. I totally agree with you, but uh, it's my mistake, sorry. Uh, but don't you see that sometimes culture reflects businesses? So it depends on the culture, the mentality of the people, how they see the world, how they see the horizon in the future that the business is about. So actually businesses may lead the culture, but the culture leads the business as well. Because nowadays, companies realize the value of happiness and they do teach their teams to be happy. So their employees must be happy, it's a factor. But sometimes people like to have big businesses because it's security for them, it is safety. Can you change every single individual mind of an employee and uh, to be creative, to be innovative? Well, first of all, I would say why is big safety and secure? We've seen some great examples in the last three years of big not being safe and secure. We see that GM would have fallen. We see that Chrysler would have fallen. We see that Bank of America would have fallen. Citibank would have fallen. Lehman did fall. And numerous others did fall. And those were the biggest businesses in the world. And the only reason they didn't fall is because taxpayers had to bail them out. So why is big safe? It's not. And we haven't had companies like HP actually over 15,000 people last year. So big isn't necessarily safe. And then I would say you can't teach Happiness. Happiness doesn't come from an HR seminar where you go, be happy. Be happy. And that's exactly what they try to do because they have centralized HR that says, ooh, this is a new study about happiness. Let's just make everybody happy. Let's give them the happy pills. Everybody, here's some ecstasy. Take that down with your water at lunch. It doesn't, doesn't work that way. It doesn't, sorry. When I talk about the importance of culture, I mean hiring slowly so that you're hiring people that appreciate that culture and stay in that culture. There's a company called Zappos that Amazon just bought. They do a really interesting practice. They give you a $3,000 bonus if you quit. That's culture, right? 
you don't actually want to be here, if you don't believe in what we're doing and our purpose, leave. And here's a bonus. We don't want you. You don't fit in our culture. We'd rather have you out now and pay you than have to figure that out 12 months from now when you've already done a lot of damage. Um, so that's the other thing I'd say, that you can't teach happiness in, in a sort of training sort of sense. Um, you, you've really got to believe it, act it, lead it, do it, hire people that are similar, and, and eventually maybe through example people learn. And then when it comes to innovation in big companies, I really believe we don't have many examples of large companies where people are free. And if we did, we might see more innovation. And we, we saw it for a while at Google. They were kind of an interesting example of freedom and happiness of employees leading to lots of innovative little things until they recently became an ad company like Apple and killed it. Um, but I do believe that if the people are happier, like the culture is happier, you will get a lot more innovation from everybody in the company. And, and whether that's direct innovation, like that person comes up with it, or it's you know team-based, like we're just sitting around at lunch, one guy says something, it's not that good, the other guy builds on it, and one girl finally goes, aha! Yeah, I think we all contribute to it. You know, I certainly am not very technical, but I have a sales and marketing perspective, and when I'm sitting around with my technical guys, I'm saying, why can't we do this, this, this? They'll just say, no, you can't. They, they think about what I'm trying to achieve, and they, and they move it, and they actually come up with something better. So I think you can all contribute to innovation if you have a culture where people are actually happy. Or they're happy. Трябва да използвате микрофон заради превода. Yes, I have one pill like this. I have one. Do you want? No, it's because the trust. I have pill here for happiness. Yes. Thank you. No, it's question about the trust. If I have idea or something like this and you try to share it, it's the same. You think about profit, not about the idea and the trust feel of happiness that I try to share it with you. Okay. Next time I'll bring it real. <laughs> it's contaminated. Uh, I'm not sure the point, but if your point is people are really brainwashed into only doing things for profit, I agree with you. <laughs> but I'll take drugs, I'll give it a go. <laughs> Bring it on! Well, the wine's off the table. Yeah, I Yeah. Trust, them. Trust helps promote happiness, yes. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to ask you something similar that Zappos asked their uh, potential employees. So, in your opinion, from scale from, from 1 to 10, uh, how weird are you? I'm probably a good 7. Anti-establishment and all that. Why is 7 good? Oh, I just mean like well-placed in 7. Like, firmly at a 7. I don't know if it's good or bad, but it works for me. I find those non-weird people a bit boring. And of course the number 10s are a bit psychotic. <laughs> Wouldn't be me. And then there's the, the ecstasy guys. They are eleven. Nah, just joking where we go. Anyway. Other questions? I think we have. Wow, we have a lot of time. Is that really the timer? I should have blabbed on longer about conservatism in Bulgaria. <laughs> May I ask you something? Well, um, it's quite interesting to me if you have, what's the biggest difficulty that you have ever faced while trying to develop your business? And how did you handle it? Yeah. Biggest difficulty I've ever faced trying to develop my business? Um, I guess that would be 2009. November, the biggest difficulty would be the uh, crappy economic situation globally that messed with me. So our company is really small, and I think uh, when you're just starting a company up, a 
global economic crisis is not the best little tool to uh, accelerate your, your, your company. Um, so how did I handle it? Well, I must say it, it, it was tough. So the first thing we did was, because we lost a lot of customers, it was, oh gosh, there's a crisis and we don't have any budgets, sorry Steve, we have to cancel our contract. And it was me, I cried at home first. And then, uh, and then the first thing I did is I cut my salary and the other founder's salary to zero. Um, like right away. So that, that was the easiest first step. And in case anybody's wondering, yes, you should always take the pain first because most management problems are your fault. They're not your employee's fault. And how dare you tell the other employees that they should take a lower salary before you go to zero? Take some personal responsibility. Um, it's a shame on you if you don't. Because I've seen a lot of companies that do that. Um, so yeah, so first I cut my salary to zero. Then, obviously, uh, we looked at our budget and we said, Bleh. We did everything we could to maintain budget for sales because in the downturn, you can't, you can't skip on sales. Something that maybe the airline should learn. But anyway, um, so we looked at our budget. We said, okay, what don't we need? What's not critical? And we cut budget on, on expenses. We also reevaluated all of our costs, like everything. How much are we paying for rent? Can we get a shittier place for cheaper? Uh, or can we renegotiate with our landlord and say, hey, landlord, it's a global crisis. Can you work with us? Or not, or do you want to or not? We did things like that across the board. We also were really transparent with our employees. So when I said I believe in transparency, I totally mean it. Um, employees know my revenues. They know what we charge the customer. They know anything they want to know. Like, uh, any financial information is open. Um, so I said, hey, here's our profit, which is zero. Actually, it's under. Here's our revenues, here's our costs, here's how much money we have in the bank, here's how much runway we have, how many months we can go before firing people, <laughs> or other drastic things. Here's my salary, it's at zero, blah, blah, blah. So it's also really transparent. And I think that's important because if you're not, I mean, come on, everybody knows there's a financial crisis. Everybody's sitting there going, hmm, gee, I notice we don't have that customer anymore. Hmm, wonder if that's going to affect our revenues and my salary. You know, it's like, so trying to like not be transparent, I think is idiotic. So we had town hall meetings almost weekly. Eh, maybe in the beginning of weekly, but then like every month. Here's what's going on, here's how much runway we have, here's our financials. Um, the next thing I did when things kept getting worse, besides continuing to try to do more sales, um, on the plus side to increase the, the revenue, is I went to my management and I asked the volunteers, besides the, the first was the founders, then I went to the managers and I asked for volunteers and I said, hey, can you cut your salary in half? And when we get sort of back into growth and profitability, we'll pay you back. So we'll take it as sort of a loan or a, I don't know, something like that. And they did, which was really cool. Kudos to my managers. Uh, and luckily, after a few months, the more intense focus on sales worked. And we got some new customers, got some more revenue, and we were able to pay the managers back. And after like five months, so I could even give myself half the salary, you know, and then back the full salary. So that was cool. But it was a really crappy year. Yeah. That was the hardest year we had. Hmm. Uh, we make a sort of software product for business intelligence. It's like data warehousing, analytics. Of course, we're trying to democratize the space and innovate, actually change the space because it hasn't changed in a long time. So we're trying to uh, play around a little bit with the market. And it's a new challenge we have, which is how do you get venture capital when you're based in Bulgaria? And all the VC is based in London or mostly Silicon Valley or the East Coast. And they just don't like the fact that you're based in Bulgaria. That's our new biggest challenge. Almost all. It's not the best expression. Anyway, I, oh, we got a way back there. Yay, yeah, okay. This guy, okay, we'll just walk this way. He'll ask a question, we'll circle around here. Uh, I, I would like to ask, um, how would you characterize your culture in the company? And how would you describe your interview process? Just because, let's take for example Zappos. They're starting with uh, interviews with their HR, uh, continuing to psychology tests, and then finishing up with uh, 